we talked on Friday's show when we were discussing the Jacksonville Jaguars. The last question I asked you was, would you trade Gardner Minshew at this point? Because Trevor Lawrence had been named the starter and all that good stuff. Right. Would you trade him? And show as hell, he was traded on Saturday to the Eagles for a sixth-round pick. I always so, knew Urban listened to me. So now, I said a lot of horrible shit about him, <laughs> but he hears it. So now you've got Jalen Hurts, Joe Flacco, and Gardner Minshew in Joe Philadelphia. Flacco, Joe Flacco is not going to be – I think he's going to be released. At, maybe so. Maybe I don't so. think they're going to carry three quarterbacks. And and I tend to believe that I, – I think Gardner could be the starter. Gardner's going to be a starter by at least week four. I think you're probably right. Like I, and there's it, a world where Gardner might come in, and if he could have played in the last preseason game, there's a world where Gardner might start immediately. Now, the problem we're going to have is, is Jalen Hurts is one of the most likable guys, and there's no question on earth that locker room loves him. Yes, they absolutely love but, him, but but they everybody in football understands this is a meritocracy, and if this guy comes in, he outplays you, and he's better than you. I can like you all day long. I'm catching balls from him. Yeah, like that's that's the issue, right? We we both love Jalen Hurts. That, uh, there's no doubt he's a great guy. I've never ever said a negative thing about him being a guy, a dude. But he, I never thought he would make it this far in the NFL. No, I never imagined him being a starter. In the NFL, no, much less not, a starter in his rookie season. Rookie season, that's like, right. That's right. That just did not make sense to me, it, regardless of going to Oklahoma, right? He, right. There is something about his passes. It's his, it's his mechanics. It's yeah. just it's the way he knows how to throw a football. It worked in high school. It worked in college. It don't work in the pros. If you don't get the ball out by so many times, how so fast? There's nothing you can do with your legs to make you valuable enough to outrun the throwing motion that you have. Yes. Yes. So, I, I think we're both on board. What, I'll tell you week this. Four? Week four, it, we the think? Sooner, the sooner Minshew starts, the more I like Devonta Smith as a rookie making waves as a rookie. Because yeah. before before that, I, I want to stay as far away as I can from all of the receivers in, in, in the Eagles for any fantasy or for, for any just watching the games and liking them to to you know bet on yardage totals or touchdowns or anything like that. I, I was it was a black hole around Philadelphia and I didn't want any part of it. If you put Gardner in there, not that Gardner's you know Brett he's, Hall, yeah he's not a game he's changer, just, but like no, but I he's think better than the I think guy. Smith and Rager have talent, and I think these guys have skill, and I think they've been held back so much. I think a guy like Gardner is going to at least say, "Hey, man, let a rip tater chip, let's go." Yeah, we're going to miss. If we're going to lose, let's lose slinging this thing. Yes. Yes, I agree. All right, so here's here's their schedule to start off with. At Atlanta, against San Francisco, at Dallas, Kansas City, and then you've got at Carolina, Tampa Bay, at Vegas, at Detroit, and then the Chargers. All right, um, I'm going to ask you a question because I already know the answer in my head. Are they any better with Gardner Minshew or without him from a wins-loss perspective? What does he mean Wins and losses. I think that he could get you one more win. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, man, anything more than a game and a half, he ain't worth it. I love Garner Minshew, and nobody wants him to be as good as I do because he's funny, he's exciting, he's everything you want to see in this sport. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yes, he's, he's great, and I think he's fun to watch. But at the end of the day, he, he might be a game, maybe a game and a half better than Jalen. Yeah. At the end of the day, that we're talking about a backup quarterback. Yes. Yes. That's hundred percent what he is. And he, and he's fun. He's awesome. But no like doubt. you said, like he's he is a backup quarterback. But I at I what think point he can do we here. make Howie Roseman pay a price for spending a second round pick on Jalen Hurts? At what point do we say, Howie, maybe you're not very good at this? You drafted Carson Wentz with the second overall pick, you traded up to do you gave up multiple first-round picks for Carson Wentz, and then you use the second-round pick on Jalen Hurts. At what point? I think Howie is a really good football man because I've seen the team. That Super Bowl team that he built, holy shit. Yes, it was ridiculous. I mean, that was, that was outside of the quarterback. That team was magical. That team was great at every aspect, all three levels of the game on both sides of the ball. Rare, rare, rare to see it. At some point in time, people had to start looking at the, Listen, we do it with Bill. Why is Howie any different? 
So I think well, I think how well, when is, are we going to say you're not good at this? You don't get to make this decision anymore. Here, here's the issue. I think he's good at everything, but maybe quarterbacks. I I kind of agree with that. I listen. I'm not. At what well, point in time do we say? See, this is difference. Well, he doesn't have a Josh. He doesn't have a Josh McDaniels in his ear saying, "I want this guy," and Bill being able to trust him. True. Okay? True. The, he doesn't I, I have do, that. I did. I did kind of forget about like they they took Rager over uh, Jordan Jefferson. So like, yeah, but a lot of people really... took a lot of guys over Jordan Jefferson. I mean, you know, yeah. Chucky's know. a moron. You know, he took rugs over over Everybody. a couple of guys. If, yeah. ever, over multiple, <laughs> I would have taken CD. I would have taken. He was definitely the fourth receiver that I would have taken that year. And you took him first. Uh, yeah, I man. I guess he's done some things that are unorthodox. Taking him over Jefferson doesn't shock me. I don't take that as a slight or an insult. I, you know, Jefferson, I think, came out of not nowhere. No one expected him to be yeah. the dominant receiver out of that draft. Yeah, no, no, you're right about that. I don't so, know. I, I'm giving I, you I a think, pass, but like, we're talking two quarterbacks, and we're talking four or five really valuable draft picks got got invested into two quarterbacks, and, and both of them are not any good. And when he took Hurts, everybody in the country was like, like what, what are you the hell? Doing? Like what are what are what is this? Like it didn't what, make sense. I, what are we doing? Having him go in the second round, like it would have made a lot more sense for him to go somewhere where he was going to sit for a while so that he can get acclimated to the speed of the yes. game and everything. Because totally agree. going from like and, and yes, Baker Mayfield has been fairly successful, but it, it took a little bit. Kyler Murray, yes, successful, but more so with his legs than with his arm. If Bill Belichick drafts like, him last year and he gets to play behind Cam Newton for two seasons. And Bill's going to spend a sixth round pick on him or a fifth round pick on him. Then I don't think anybody bats an eye, right? Right. Nobody cares. Taking him second with a, a very early second or a pretty middle second. Yeah. To the Eagles, I, I just thought it was weird. Yeah. I thought it was weird at some point in time. Like I said, Bill has offensive coaches that have been with him for a lifetime that he trusts. And I think he's not great at some of this stuff, but he's got other people's ear. I don't know who has Howie's ear. He's may not really be anybody so, anymore. So, you know, you know what's interesting about this? I think, but I don't know. Take taking forever Are talking about something we're supposed to go fast on. But I just found this interesting. Both of the guys that he drafted interview really well, talk really good. They basically talk their way into a job and getting drafted. Is this a thing where I don't want to interview anybody? Like I want to judge these people without knowing who they are personally, because then somebody's going to sell sell themselves to me, and that's not how we need to do evaluations. I don't, I don't believe in not doing the interviews, right? I believe in doing the interviews, but do not let them sway you towards taking one guy over another. Like let it be something that nixes somebody off the list. The problem like, is that some of these guys are so – I think I, there's no question Jalen Hurts is so likable that if you sit down with him for an hour and a half, you're going to want him in your locker room. Yes. But that's the issue is you don't need him in your locker room because you like the guy. No, you you can have him in your locker room, but you could have had him in your locker room for like a fourth-round pick. Like, <laughs> or or and, a sixth-round pick. And he, yeah. and he doesn't have to be your starter. No. So You should have had at least one other backup before him. And this is this is all basically the same question that I had about Cam Newton when we discussed it earlier last week was, you know, does that locker room like him so much that, you know, and obviously this is all super conspiratorial, like, That's I right. you know, but it, did did they know that they would get in trouble or that, that Cam would have no. to sit out so that the, 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 can't, Bill Bill just doesn't care about any of that stuff. No, I don't. I don't figure he does. Bill, but Bill, I do wonder about that, some of these that other stuff. Teams. Will never never affect the Patriot locker room, and everybody knows it. But the reason it won't is because Bill's been doing it for twenty two years the same way, and everybody knows the deal. Yeah, that's it. You can't start. We've never done it this way, and now I'm in Philadelphia, and I want to start doing it this way. No, no, no. When you first start doing it, you're gonna have problems. And you got to be okay with the problems that it brings. I can see this being a problem. Yeah, no, but I'll right. tell you this: at some point in time, the guys, the guys in the locker room, know who the best players are. That's that's the thing that always absolves everything. I've listened to people try to tell me the vaccinated and unvaccinated are going to uh, split the locker room. This politician and that politician are going to split the locker. 
It and you know what? It never does. No, because it it's all about winning. Never does because at some point in time, once outside of the football game, they might all hate each other, but they all understand we need each other and we work together for these hours throughout the day. These hours on Sunday, we all go to work, and it's in my best interest for the best player to play because I look better when I'm catching passes that are catchable than than struggling to catch passes. You it's better for me. To, for for the best player to be playing, you are describing the 2017 Alabama locker room. That's what you're doing. Like it, it, the receivers on that team. Remember, it was Jerry Judy and Rugs, yeah, and, and Smitty and Waddle uh, was there. And Waddle and uh, like they were discussing. Yes, like they wanted to to be their quarterback, but Jalen had been the quarterback for two years at that point, and and and, and they all had one loss. Yeah, had one loss in a national championship game by That's by it. one point. Like it, they wanted a a quarterback that could throw the football, and they were coming off of the field against Auburn when they got beat by like two touchdowns or whatever. They were livid, and going into practices towards the playoff because they didn't know if they were getting in the playoff, but they ended up going into those practices to a split the reps at the at the one. Like they didn't need him. Against uh, against Clemson that year, but no. heading into that national championship game, like you saw what happened, they get into halftime, they flip it, let's go, and he was already prepared because he'd been playing with the ones. So that's exactly what it is. Like the everybody loves Jalen, but if Minshew's better, I don't think you're gonna have any kind of locker room problem. I, that's it. You got to give the guy a chance because the right guy's gonna weed out, and the locker room will take care of itself. It just always does, Gary. Yes. That's what people the NFL who, is. People who bring that kind of stuff up are people that haven't spent time in locker rooms. I haven't spent a lot of time in a locker room. Hell, I quit playing football early in high school. Okay. But I know enough about locker rooms and I spend enough time with guys who do spend time in locker rooms or have. I I just understand how this stuff works, man. There are no politics in that room when yep. you're going about your business. There, there are no, you're vaxxed and I'm not, or I'm vaxxed and you're not, and I don't want to be around you. Hell no. If, if we're offensive linemen, we're asshole to asshole in that place, baby. We are hip yes. to hip, and nobody is coming through. Yes. You're right. You're right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.